Hey, Yan Kaur. So I did pronounce your name correctly this time, right? <laughs> yes, you did. <laughs> How are you doing, man? Doing really well. Thanks for having me. Is it hot in Germany as well? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> We have like, currently it is uh, 36 degrees Celsius. Should be like 105, 106 or something in Fahrenheit. 36 is like normal here man that's not hot <laughs> that, that, that's like 15 more than what we're used to here because here it's <laughs> here normally is like 44 43 sometime even oh, 45 I, I would die that's normal here 35 36 <laughs> is pleasant for us <laughs> okay so why don't you give a short introduction like what you've been doing in this online world for the last few years and then we'll move on to your new service-oriented endeavor in the WordPress sure ecosystem. Thing. Sounds very good. Um, I started as an entrepreneur in 2013 when mm -hmm. I launched a company with my best friend. He's actually still one of my closest friends to this mm -hmm. date. We've known each other for 10, 10 years this month. Mm -hmm. um, back then, I was <laughs> focusing on building websites already and he was doing hardware part like, like uh, setting up uh, office spaces and stuff like that mm -hmm. and at some point he got a really good job offer that he couldn't deny and I continued uh, the venture on my own and um, yeah ever since then I started my first blog um, I'm from Germany but I already started in English back then because I thought uh, the local businesses where I live in a quite ru rural area here in Germany they don't understand online marketing that well at least Back then they didn't, so I didn't want to have to explain why a business needs a website. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't want to have these conversations, so I already focused on getting clients all around the world, basically. I'm quite familiar with English, ever been, so always been. So, um, yeah, um, I started working with WordPress right from the beginning. I had the first experience with WordPress in a job working as a business consultant. That's mm -hmm. how I first got in touch with it. And then um, I just decided to focus my coding skills more on the WordPress ecosystem, like building themes, building plugins, setting up sites from scratch and stuff like that. So that's basically what I've been doing since or until uh, last year. And then mm -hmm. early this year in January, I got hired as a lead developer for a German agency and my freelancing. I, I still do freelance work or I still, I still run my own business, but the lead developer part is now taking up most of my time. So correct me if I'm wrong, you started with your own agency setup and now you're working with some other agency as a developer, right? Yeah, most of the time I actually was freelancing all on my own. Mm -hmm. um, and then I got in touch with those guys from the agency that hired me mm -hmm. probably in 2000 and. 15 something like that mid 2015 back then i worked as a freelancer for them and mm -hmm. at some point um what they needed was somebody who could build wordpress websites and code in wordpress and what i needed is designers who actually can create nice looking designs so at some points our projects were like tied together really closely okay and we spent hours each month going through the projects and knowing I, I need to invoice them this amount of hours and they need to invoice me that amount of hours. So we noticed we just get along really well. So I, some... are you working with that agency as of now? Yes, yes. I, I am their lead developer now. I joined their founders team actually. So is that a full-time job now for you? Or yeah. Mm, yeah. That's, so besides that agency stuff that you do as a developer, you have stopped making website on your own, like no direct clients and you've shifted your focus on something specific, which is speeding up client websites. Now, how did yeah. that happen? Um, that happened mainly because um, of two reasons. First, I didn't want to compete with my employer. That, mm -hmm. that just makes sense. Like, Fair enough. If I, yeah, and if, if I get approached with building a website, I would rather have the team directly in place rather than just being on my own as the developer. Mm -hmm. So that, that was just uh, one thing. And the other thing was a book that is called uh, Build to Sell, which is about building an agency that is actually sellable in the future because that requires a certain structure for the agency, like 
um, removing yourself from the day-to-day -day business, for example, and setting up processes and standard operating procedures and stuff like that. And that book really sparked an idea in me with uh, focusing on the loading speed part of the websites because I've been doing that ever since. It's just part of regular WordPress work. But now when I focus on it, I can craft like a package, almost like a productized service where people can buy the product speed optimization rather than working with me as a freelancer and seeing it as a service. Okay. And the, regarding the speed optimization service, are you alone working on it or do you have few subcontractors? I, I, I do employees? have contractors. Yes, I do have contractors who do the main part of the work. Okay. Um, mainly because I don't want to be involved in that day-to-day -day business. I just want to be on top of the game and work on the business rather than in the business. So you do, ha you do help them or guide those contractor contracted yes. workers, like how to do this speed yeah. optimization with the work process and the workflow, right? Yeah. Yeah. We, we figured out a pretty good process on like how to analyze the websites and then figure out what needs to be done. Now you mentioned about using systemized cold email outreach process to find clients for speed optimization service. Can you explain what it, what this is and how does this work? Because not many people would know what a cold email outreach process is. Yeah, actually cold email outreach um, is something that I've just introduced lately. I haven't, I, or I didn't need to do cold email outreach when I was working as a freelancer uh -huh. because I had a really strong network of people who always referred clients to me. Like I, I would build up strategic partnerships with uh, coaches for entrepreneurs or with business consultants, for example, with people who constantly could refer projects to me. Now with the speed optimization process, what I figured is rather than just relying on people referring projects to me, I want to have my own predictable sales pipeline, basically. Mm -hmm. And what I did is I, I did an an analysis of the market and figured out what types of websites benefit the most from a loading speed optimization. And I decided to focus on the WooCommerce market first because okay. we only do WordPress websites. And with online shops built with WooCommerce, if they load faster, they almost immediately see better conversion rates and getting more money from the site. So that's, that's my rationale behind that. And what I did is I searched the web for a database of websites running WooCommerce. There are sites that sell, like they just scrape the internet, basically check if WooCommerce is installed and then save that domain in a spreadsheet. Mm -hmm. And I downloaded one, one of those spreadsheets. And now what we're doing is every day we're working through that spreadsheet and then we try to find email addresses associated to that page if it fits our criteria and then we reach out to them via cold email. Okay, circling back, like how you get clients for the service. Now, there's one process which is called email outreach. I believe you use, I think you mentioned this in the web creators community that you use hunter.io for yeah. the same process. So besides this medium of getting clients, do you have any other funnels or other ways to get clients for speed optimization? Um, the other main way currently is my referral network of okay. people who know that I'm doing that and who know that I'm good at what I'm doing and just refer their contacts to me. And even the cold email outreach process is being handled by your workers and not you directly, right? It, it's basically mostly automated even. Like mm -hmm. um, I've built a tool that can analyze the websites automatically based on criteria that ensure that they are a good fit. And mm -hmm. then that tool plugs into Hunter.io using their API and the email addresses that get back get in the, added into a spreadsheet that I can then, or my team goes through and sorts those out that doesn't don't make sense to reach out, like any support addresses, for example. Mm -hmm. And then those emails get plugged into a tool that is called mixmax.com, mm -hmm. which allows you to set up cold email sequences. So basically, you would set up like a drip campaign of emails and if the first email doesn't get opened or you don't get a reply for the first email, then two days later, the tool automatically sends up a follow email and things like that. That's interesting. So let's talk about speed optimization. Now, this is very important. How do you explain the importance of a faster website to an average client? As it, this is a difficult task considering majority of clients are blinded just by two tasks, a good looking website 
and getting the website developed. These are the two main yeah. tasks. Like majority of they don't even bother about content. So speed yeah. optimization comes below, uh, very low in the you know ladder to make your website. So how do you convince them? Explain the importance. Yeah, that, that's actually uh, one of the beautiful aspects of the process for the cold email outreach that I created. It's like with WooCommerce store owners, it's super easy to explain why having a fast shop yeah. is important. Money, money. Money, money, exactly. <laughs> and mon mon yeah, mon money always is the hook to get yeah. the project because you just show them the statistics that Google and Kissmetrics and all these other pages compile, like 74%, uh, 47, sorry. 47% of consumers demand a website to load within two seconds. Mm -hmm. And for every second of page loading time, you lose 7% in conversions. And usually these two numbers alone, like the client or the prospect immediately starts calculating how much money he's losing with those numbers. Like if I, if I show them a report stating their website takes 10 seconds to load mm -hmm. and they lose 7% conversions for every second, it's almost a no-brainer to think that speed optimization is important. Now, that's that's for the WooCommerce or where the money is the big yeah. factor. Like, how do you ex how do you explain the same thing to uh, say a brochure, five-page brochure website, which is just a portfolio website? Do you even handle those clients, or do you even waste or invest time in explaining the importance of speed optimization to those kind of people? Oh, we don't actively reach out to those kind of people. Um, mm -hmm. Usually when we work on those, they, those are referrals where we need less convincing on. Mm -hmm. um, but it's it's the same hook or the same argument, basically. Like if you have a fast loading website, the perceived quality of your website is higher. Like you don't frustrate people when they are browsing through your website. Even um, what, what I use sometimes is an analogy. Like uh, I ask the prospect to imagine their clients sitting on a bus or in the tube or wh wherever, where they have like one minute to two minutes to check their phone. And when they come to the uh, to their website, they don't want to wait any longer than they absolutely need to to see the information on their website. Mm -hmm. I think you already confirmed this, but I want to confirm again. Like you only work with WordPress websites, right? Not any other yeah. web platform. Yeah, currently we're only focusing on WordPress. Okay. So say, for example, I'm the prospective client and I've made a contact with you. Like, what do you do when a first contact is made by a prospective client? Do you proceed with free consultation or straight away offer yeah. them a paid plan? Like, how do you proceed? Usually what we do is we run, we run the website uh, through GT Metrics, uh -huh. which is uh, our favorite analysis tool. We use Pingdom as well to confirm. Yeah. And then based on GT metrics, we send them the report so that they actually see the numbers for themselves. We give um, a brief explanation of what they can do on their own. And we offer a more detailed uh, service after that, once they confirm that they're interested in the website, in, in optimizing the website. And besides GT metrics and Pingdom, do you have any other secret tools? to analyze the, <laughs> analyze the well, status of this website with regard to speed? Well, if, there was, if they were secret, I probably wouldn't share them. But <laughs> <laughs> no, we, we, we don't need any other tools currently. It's yeah. like, it, there's, there's only so much that you can analyze on a website. GT right? Metrics gives such a detailed report. Like yeah. most of the people just see, okay, two seconds, let's close the page. I don't understand what's written down there. <laughs> Yeah. That that's the yeah, common that, thing with most of the yeah. people. Yeah, and that that's where we come in actually yeah. at exactly that point. Yeah. So now, once you've identified items that are causing slow speed of a website, now do you get back to the client for customized quote for the job offer, or do you offer a productized service like one price package with specific work items? Um, currently, what we do is we write only custom code for the products, which uh, is the reason why our prices are somewhat expensive currently. Mm -hmm. um, we don't use any like regular caching plugins or something, but because only what, what those plugins usually do is they add code to the htaccess file on the server. Yeah. Like they, they add directives to that file and we can write those on our own without bloating up the WordPress installation with another plugin. So you hate those plugins, right? I, I, I'm, I wouldn't say I hate them, <laughs> but it's, um, 
at some point it's unnecessary. Like the team that we've compiled here is uh, pretty savage or pr pretty good with uh, customizing HTXS files and excluding what needs to be excluded and setting up uh, all the GZIP compressions and expires headers and all that good stuff in the HTXS file directly. And what's also the beauty of that is that um, it's less risky for the client to change settings and to break settings at some point. Like when they try to edit the configuration of the caching plugin and they add like the minification, for example, put all the CSS into one file. Oh, my site then, is broken. Exactly. And then they come to us and say, you broke our site. <laughs> yeah, because it looks like as if someone smashed it on the floor because, you know, the design yeah. is gone. Only the text is visible. That's that's very common thing. But now you mentioned that, okay, now for things like expiry headers and all that, you can add code for it in the HTML. ST access file but what yeah. about the catching part uh, how do you do that is that the same like custom code or you have some custom plugins done for that like how do you go about with that caching usually is handled uh, through uh, CDN we usually set up a Cloudflare account okay with our package and then leave all the minification and the caching to Cloudflare okay that's like offloading tasks from the WordPress yeah, it's, it's all, all about uh, saving server resources at so that point. Yeah, I'm asking you because this is very new for me because for very standard normal users, you know, uh, even adding expiry headers to HD access would be a difficult task. They would just end up using a catch plugin. Like there are so many of them like Swift catch, there's super catch, there's WP yeah. Rocket. Now they have all kinds of options obviously some options don't play nice on certain hostings and you end up with broken websites so yeah i'm just asking from a layman point of view now if i have a two op i i have two options on the table using a plugin like wp rocket vis-a-vis using a custom code like you do and setting up a cdn which yeah. according to you would perform better on same hosting environment same kind of a website with same kind of content and traffic um, that's a good question. I probably wouldn't say that there would, in the end, there would probably be no noticeable uh, difference between the two. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think that what we do is that much different than what a caching plugin can do. And most caching plugins that I've come across, they don't really add like extensive resource load to the website. It's only for those plugins, like when Swift performance is uh, what we're using internally on our own websites too it's mm -hmm. like <laughs> it's with most like uh, most designer websites they always build good designs for their clients but they don't have time to work on their own yeah that's true <laughs> it's so, somewhat similar with us so we use uh, swift performance and um when that plugin builds up the warm-up table and goes through your website and scans what sites need to be cached and and caches those that is a phase where the server is under quite some load and the uh, server resources get bogged down a little bit from the plugin, which is nothing what we would have in our configuration. But um, in the end, I don't think that there will be like two seconds difference in between the configurations. I think either will be fine. So in not even a single case where you have a paid client for this web host, a uh, web speed optimization service, you don't, you do not install any plugin. So it's all custom code and using CDN, right? Sometimes what we do is we install the Cloudflare plugin, uh -huh. just so that the client is able to purge the cache without logging into Cloudflare. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes what we do, depending on the need of the client, is installing um, a software that replaces YouTube videos with thumbnails yeah. and only loads the player on click because we just recently finished a website in the health niche with uh, a fitness trainer that had like all these testimonials on the homepage, which he wanted to keep. So we, we just uh, used that approach. Um, other than that, image optimization maybe, like E3W or something like that, or Kraken that optimize image files on upload. So image optimization is part of the package that you offer or is this like is this separate from what you offer in a productized service we usually focus on a selected number of pages where we do image optimization manually 
Okay. And then we install those plugins to automate the process as good as, pos as possible. There, there's two sides of image optimization. One is reducing the file size, and one is making sure the images are uploaded in the correct dimensions, yeah. which usually cannot be automated. Yep. So uh, file size optimization usually uh, is included in our package, and then we do check the images for the correct dimensions on a selected number of pages that we agreed on with the client. Yeah, because this is a two-edged sword, because if you do not use the correct image dimension, you get dinged on the score on GT metrics. Yeah. But yeah. I personally sometimes use bigger images than what it would be required in a specific column or a row because they look good on retina display, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. You just need the add to X variation of the image. Yeah. So that will fix this problem, right? Yeah. And also what we see more and more luckily is uh, themes using the source set attribute in their code. Yeah. which is the way to implement the image so that the browser knows what, sh what version to load depending on the width of the browser. I think that was introduced by WordPress by itself. Like It's a default feature now, right? I'm not sure if that's default by now, but we, we see it more and more. We usually, or sometimes we don't work on web websites that are up to date, so we first need <laughs> to run the updates. <laughs> okay, now, generally, have you noticed a pattern of specific items or reasons that cause slow loading speed in majority yeah. of cases, like yeah. your favorite reasons? Yeah, there, there are multiple. Actually, images are a big part mm -hmm. because most business owners don't pay attention to that. Um, not cleaning up your plugins is a big part as well. Like, for example, using the Contact Form 7 plugin, which is uh, highly popular, <laughs> but they, they load the scripts on every page. On every page, yeah. Yeah, which doesn't make sense at all. Um, other resource-intensive plugins like Broken Link Checker, for example, which all work very well, but but they are resource-intensive. I just I just things. removed it yesterday, you know. Yeah, I, I think in your group there was a post shared about this topic, which, which like yeah. 30 plugins or something. I, I shared that post it. and I was surprised to see Broken Link Checker there. And guess what? Yeah. I, I hardly get any broken links on, a, on my website, so I just removed that plugin. Yeah, and there are so many external tools that you can use, like Screaming Frog or something, that scan the website externally. Um, okay. And this, okay, go ahead. Okay, so besides images, what are your favorite reasons? So you are continuing with that, right? Yeah. Um, sliders, usually. <laughs> <laughs> like Layer Slider or Revolution Slider. Um, I thought and those then, day, I thought those days were gone, but I guess you get a lot of classic websites that are slow yeah. and want your help, right? Yeah, they they are slow for a reason usually. <laughs> so so do you suggest them replacing slider with a static yeah. image, or you keep them happy with their slider fanciness? You, usually, we try to convince them and explain why a slider probably doesn't make sense in their situation. And how a static image or static content in general will probably increase conversions even. So when convincing and fails, what happens? Uh, we usually just, um, either we can find a very fast slider plugin. Which is your or, favorite. I think SolilioQ is the yeah. top of the class. Do you use that? Yeah, yeah that, that's what we fall back to in those cases. Or if um, the client really wants us to keep the slider, well, we just have to make it work then. So images, sliders, what next? Uh, not cleaning up the database. Yeah. Like clogged up databases with often metadata, like post revisions and terms and tags and all that other good stuff, which you can use. Uh, Swift Performance has a really good cleanup tool integrated. Uh, WP Sweep is what we use on other pages as well. Yeah, I use that plugin. It's, it's very easy to use, the Sweep yeah. one. Yeah. Okay, so... Images, sliders, database. Is there anything else? Slow hosting. <laughs> okay, <laughs> now this list will keep on growing. Okay, so <laughs> let's 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 start the actual process of fixing. Like when you yeah. have a site on on the table that you need to fix, do you yeah. clone an existing website or directly start applying fixes to that website itself? Um, usually, we start working on the website directly because um, most things what we do, we know won't break the site. We do take a backup before, of course, 
Okay. That, that, that's of course. And if, if we know we need to do some more in-depth work, we clone the website. But the problem with cloning the site is that some, uh, there's only so much you can do on a clone. Like you, yeah. you can optimize the scripts and you can optimize the images and minify and stuff like that. But in the end, you need to specify the configuration to the host of the live website, which usually is not the environment we have in our cloning area. And that's why we need to work on the live website as well. Mm -hmm. So if you identify that the web hosting is causing the slow speed, do you do website migration to a better host in those cases? Yeah. Or you just send client away to get it done from someone else? No, we recommend uh, another web host and then we do the migration for them if they want us to. And which web hosting generally do you recommend like in majority of cases? Uh, we really like Cloudways web hosting. Okay. And other than that, like the top of the class are like WP Engine, Flywheel. You don't use those? Uh, WP Engine is somewhat restrictive when it comes to optimizing for loading speed. Yeah, they, they have their own caching setup, which seems to work pretty well for the majority of the websites. But there's they are limiting what we can do as our service, mm -hmm. so that's not not a good option for us. Our SiteGround seems to work pretty well for many clients, and our Liquid Web seems to be pretty reliable and fast as well. <laughs> okay, now let's talk about WooCommerce websites now. Yeah. What 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 is the difference in your methodology or the stuff that you do in optimizing the speed comparing a WooCommerce website vis-a-vis -a, -vis a non WooCommerce website? Like, what extra things you need to be careful when you are doing the WooCommerce website optimization? Mm -hmm. So first of all, we need to make sure that we don't break any WooCommerce functionality when mini minifying and combining scripts. That that's a given. Mm -hmm. um, we need to make sure that the product thumbnails in the settings actually fit the products that have been uploaded. Mm -hmm. So we need to work on those. Um, there are things inside WooCommerce mm -hmm. that can slow down the website. Like when you have this mini card, usually on, on, in the top of the page, you have like this mini minified card item that shows just the amount that you have in card and the number of products. Mm -hmm. um, having that functionality with live updates once you put a plug uh, a product into the card also can slow down the website because it's additional scripts that need to be embedded for that and it's additional ajax functions that are running in the background and usually what we do is uh we talk to the client and most often they agree to remove that functionality and instead take a client that adds a product to the card directly to the card page rather okay. than having that minified card update because a lot of WooCommerce website would have those cart because majority of WordPress themes of WooCommerce yeah. have has that feature on top right side, you will see an active cart button. Yeah. So as soon as you add items, they will start appearing that at yeah. that place. So you recommend removing that, right? Yeah. And obviously take care of no catching on the cart and checkout pages. Yeah, exactly. Ignoring all the WooCommerce cookies and stuff like that, all the session data for WooCommerce. And what about people who create mess with adding multiple WooCommerce add-ons? Like there are so many people who would just keep on adding add-ons for very small functionality in their WooCommerce shop. Do you even address that as well? Uh, that depends on, on the situation. There, there are too many add-ons to really have a rule of thumb for that. Mm -hmm. If it's easy to integrate that functionality into the theme, we offer to do that. The problem here is though, once we integrate that functionality and remove that plugin, we need to keep that functionality updated once WooCommerce updates. Yeah, because that's the problem with WooCommerce. Yeah, yeah. so usually what we do is just, we try to leave them in place mm -hmm. and then just optimize them as good as we can. Like with Swift Performance, for example, you can specify where which plugin is supposed to load. So if you have a plugin in WooCommerce that only handles the back end, like, like extending the customer management, for example, or extending the order management in the back end, we can force the website to not load that plugin and the related scripts in the front end using Swift Performance. Okay, so once the optimization has been done, do you educate client what all has been done 
with regard yeah. to speeding up the website and also do you provide any documentation or video training for further self maintenance like clearing catch because sometimes you do yeah. install plugins right yeah sometimes we do and when we do we give the client a walk through usually in a short screencast or in written form with screenshots yeah okay and your speed optimization service is this a one off service or most of the clients come on regular retainers for regular speed check analysis and fixes we are actually working on introducing a monthly retainer model as we speak right now currently it's only one off because i'm only providing that so or i'm only focusing on that service for like the last month or so but um we we started with one off to validate the interest and the more people I speak to, especially when it comes to online marketers that could uh, extend their referral network and um, working with those people, the more I hear that a monthly retainer model for them even is more interesting. So they would rather send their clients to us when we charge a month monthly retainer rather than when we charge a bigger one-off price. And do you want to talk about pricing, like how expensive? it can be or how not so expensive it can be like in terms of getting yeah. websites sped up. Yeah. So usually uh, our custom process starts at around 450 euro uh, dollars, okay. 450 USD with uh -huh. all the custom coding uh, that includes if we need to install like a caching plugin or an image optimization plugin or whatever that includes the license as well. Mm hmm. For the monthly retainer, we're currently trying to figure out how we can price this model at around $80 per month for ensuring that the website stays up to speed as well. The thing, the thing with that is um, it's somewhat tough for us because we need to limit what the client can do. Like if the client installs broken link checker or has WordPress running all the time, then he will blame us for a slow website even though it, we didn't do anything to slow it down. He did it himself. So... We need to, before we can offer that model, we need to make sure that we have a, a bulletproof system in place to firstly educate our clients, like what they can do on their own and what they probably should ask us. Mm -hmm. And then we need to um, set up all the software that monitors the loading speed and stuff like that. Okay. And once you get into this monthly retainer maintenance, do you also plan to maintain the hosting? Because hosting is very important when with regard to speed optimization that, yeah. that you optim you hold the control of the hosting environment. Yeah. At, ne at least we will need to have all the logins for the hosting and okay. we need to have uh, access to like C panel or other control panels that the hosting mm -hmm. provider uses. Um, I'm not too sure if I want to take over hosting currently, to be honest, because there are really good managed hosting companies. Like we named a few already. Mm -hmm. Use those usually work very reliable. So what we might end up doing is before taking up a client for a monthly retainer, transfer them to one of those really good hosting companies that we can rely on and then mm -hmm. work with those hosting companies. Because a lot of people who do retainers, not just for speed optimization, like just normal maintenance and care, they do bundle yeah. in the hosting part within that. That's that looks more attractive to an end user client because he's just paying one invoice per month to getting everything yeah. done. So it can be a good idea. Now, regarding your client mix, like most of these clients are from US or from other countries as well? Uh, most are from the US currently. And majority of them are WooCommerce websites or, yeah. or you also like trying to increase the base of non-WooCommerce websites? Well, we first want to get a hold, get a foot in the ground with the e-commerce market. So it makes sense for us to focus on WooCommerce. Um, we have quite a large number of domains that are potential clients for us in, mm -hmm. in the WooCommerce area. So first we will focus on uh, reaching out to those and pitching our service to those sites. And I'm working on the referral network on the site, which usually involves speaking to many like coaches and consultants. And those have usually other clients. Those have clients that are authors and that are bloggers and maybe small business owners. And where do you advertise about the speed optimization service? Like on a specific website you have? Uh, on wpmastery.xyz. Okay. On now, besides speed optimization service, I see you write a lot of articles because I've seen your few posts on yeah. Liquid Web Blog. So 
yeah one talk about it like is it a passion or is it like a parallel yes. work task routine thing for it you it is yeah um it started out with my desire to build my brand a bit more and to build up more backlinks to my website mm-hmm. and i didn't even reach out to them what really played well together was uh, the in the week i made the decision to get more into guest posting and to start pitching websites their vp of product chris lima reached out to me via twitter and asked me about a potential collaboration uh-huh. and um then he referred me to their content marketing team at liquid web and we worked out a contract that works for both sides very well i currently write uh, two articles for them per month uh, around 1500 words minimum okay and uh, i really enjoy writing for them so i'm looking forward to that i'm actually talking to uh, aksha chudari the founder of blockward and malcare okay because they seem to be working on a different or on on a, on a similar content marketing strategy with introducing authors to their blog mm-hmm. so um i'm talking to him about we can if we can figure out a way that i can become a contributor on their blog as well so this is not guest posting it's like serious paid writing position right yeah with liquid web it's serious paid writing um with aksha that will be probably similar mhm so um yeah just just adding a nice little income stream basically it's not nothing too crazy but it's i'm all about diversifying the income just curious like how many hours or how many days does it take to write one article like which is 1500 plus words depends on the topic um i wrote one article uh which is an introduction to a wp boilerplate plugin the the one that i shared in the in the group today yeah um that took quite a bit because i took all the screenshots of sections of the code that are important to understand and then walk people through how they can customize that code so that that takes about probably with with refining and going back and forth probably a day like like 8 hours or something in traditional work days um other posts that don't need that many uh screenshots for example one is in review currently about working with wp freelancers those usually are faster like 4 hours to 5 hours and then adding the review with the feedback that i get from the good web on top and obviously use grammarly right <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's it's a favorite tool for everyone you know okay oh, yes. it saves my life <laughs> <laughs> it saves everyone's life <laughs> english is not an easy language at least when you're writing right so yeah. let's dive into toolbox so yanko i'm i'm actually pronouncing your name again and again because i want to perfect it so <laughs> what are your current five favorite tools that how are you online business um okay i i see wordpress as a given and everything that's yeah. related to that the um other than that asana is huge for me and for the agency i work on because we do all the task management there okay uh slack for communication internally in the agency is really really important google drive for sharing all the files we have uh like 5 terabytes or something in google drive use with with their unlimited data plan um so we have three right now then we have yeah recently what became very important for me is gt metrics with their api functionality it's really good uh the same is true for hunter.io which is very important in our outreach process and then mixmax for sending those emails you just mentioned about communicating with team members i just Uh, got curious like are your team members like they are remote they are in germany or they are some in other countries for the agency that i'm employed at no nope, your you website mean? optimization service okay so the website optimization service are remote contractors oh okay um the agency i work in is um mostly based in germany but located in different areas of germany so slack is really important for that as well Okay now you are into speed optimization service and page builders actually are not the favorite of <laughs> developers they all have allergy to it even i used to have allergy to page builders but now that allergy has converted into pure love because it's safe so yeah 
Yeah, not just Beaver Builder. Actually, Beaver Builder was the second page builder I used. The first I used was Site Origin, which is still till date is really good. It's just it doesn't have those modules and fanciness. But okay. But if you compare like speed optimization type of thing, then Site Origin is very optimized. But then Beaver Builder, you know, balances everything for a developer. It doesn't have too much fanciness like yeah. other page builders, like newer page builders, but it gives you everything that you need for any kind of website build. Now it has Beaver Themer, yeah. which actually blows the competition away because you can actually build any part of a website using Beaver products. So are you actually a fan of any page builder plugin? Uh, I use Thrive Architect on my own website, which seems to be working pretty well for me because I also use their leads plugin to generate email leads or email opt-ins. Mm -hmm. um, I, to be honest, I have yet to try Beaver Builder. I still somewhat manage my way to not use it <laughs> until now. Oh, it's amazing. <laughs> I, I probably switch. So you really make, make me curious with Actually, that. Actually, a lot of people do use Thrive and I think they use it. I've never used Thrive, but I see a lot of people using Thrive because they have, you know, they have their pre-made email uh, yeah. ma landing page templates. Yeah, and a lot of they, people they are, templates for everything. Yeah, and a lot of people ask me why Beaver Builder doesn't have these kind of templates. I don't know, even I don't know the answer, but <laughs> Thrive Builder actually thrives on these template layouts yeah. itself because they are like pre made template. Like, you want to do a webinar, just throw in a template, change the name. 100%. Yeah, so, and that, that's my main reason as well. Like, uh, the templates are amazing, they, they are super easy to customize and they look great. And most importantly for me is to save time when building websites. Like I, I have the Genesis framework as a foundation on my website. So all the blog posts and like the static pages that aren't that important in quotation marks, um, those are built with the uh, Genesis framework only with no Thrive Architect features, but the landing pages and the sales pages and stuff like that, I just love the templates for. Cool. You reminded of me, Genesis, because I, be, I use Genesis for almost four or five years, ever since Genesis yeah. was Genesis. But now everything is like mellowed down. I, I only have like two websites on Genesis, my personal websites, all have gone to either Beaver Builder theme or Astra theme. So times yeah. are changing. Definitely. What, what do you think about the acquisition of Genesis by WP Engine? Well, it's an uncertain time. Uh, let me tell you, I also sell commercial Genesis child themes. I have a website called Simple Pro Themes where I sell to uh, commercial Genesis themes. And ever since they have acquired Genesis, the sale, theme sales have picked up. I don't know why. So, <laughs> um, I I'm really don't know why. Probably because Genesis is getting more attention now. Maybe, maybe because that's given like when they complete the, you know, overall integration. So when you spin up a new WP engine website or WordPress hosting there, they will pre-install your Genesis framework. And I'm, course, yeah. and I'm sensing that they will also pre-install majority of their child teams on it. Yeah. So, so I, you get, you should get a partnership with them then. <laughs> Let's see, <laughs> because uh, on the thread on the Facebook group, the, uh, the person from WP Engine did say that we are not going to close the third party Genesis theme ecosystem. Yeah. Instead, we will try to flourish it. Now, let's see, because there's no clarity as of now, there's no communication after that. So because even when they were not acquired, Genesis itself had a lot of third party themes listed on the Studio Press yeah. website. So let's see, because all third party themes do not have that kind of code quality. So I don't know how they will go about it, but to be honest and brutally, or, or, or I should say to be brutally honest, I think they have missed the bus a little because they, they just focused on one thing. We are for developers, developers, but the thing is even developers are using different themes these days. So yeah. Yeah. I think they should have moved with the times. Um, like everyone stacked their theme settings into customizer, just like WordPress said. But Genesis still has their Genesis theme yeah. page floating around in the WordPress dashboard, even though you can access those settings in the customizers. But then why duplicate the effort, right? So because if you compare it with newer themes like GeneratePress, Astra, 
they actually blow the competition away because they are as good as Genesis in terms of code quality. And they are also developer friendly because they have the similar hook system. Like you, if you yeah. know PHP, you can hook anything anywhere. So I don't know. I, 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 I'm, I, I'm a regular user of Beaver Builder theme, but I also use Astra on a lot of websites. So Astra I've been using ever since it came out. So I've, I've, I've seen how it has grown. So with Astra, you can do actually anything with its pro add-on because it has so many features. You can exploit hooks without writing any you know code because in genesis yeah. if you want to exploit hooks the only way is php and break your websites right yeah yeah but, <laughs> but <laughs> i don't know maybe they should revamp or think about it now it's in hands of wp engine let's see what they do but the yeah. i think the core development st- team behind genesis is still the same at least it would remain same for at least few years so and I, now they have a bit more funding so we'll, we'll see what they can do with that they, oh, they yeah. more money, in the oh, money makes you go places. So let's see. Yeah. <laughs> so let's see. And WP Engine has lots and lots and lots of money, to be honest. And, <laughs> yeah. and, and they recently upped their prices also. So they are only f- focusing on the creamy part of the client base. They are not looking for, you know, people who are just there who can't afford, like, you got to pay $35 per month. If you can't, just please. There are so many options. This host gator who will give you $35 <laughs> for a year, right? So, I, I to be honest, it's the about Genesis. I'm not too. Sh- I, I I wouldn't say the future is not bright. The future is bright in the sense that WP Engine acquired it. Now let's see if it messes up with it or it yeah. actually makes it better because Genesis does need a lot of improvement. As such, it as a base th- framework, it's good. But when you compare it with the practical usage by a normal people they need a lot of improvement. They can just copy theme features from a lot of, uh, you know, themes like Astra. Yeah. Who cares? It's the GPL world. So 100%, I agree. But then let's see. I, I don't know because they, the only intention WP engines spend that much money to get it because they want to use it to flourish their WordPress hosting business. So yeah, they want yeah, they to just need, need another reason. And I think they need more goodwill in the community. Like if, if they can say two years from now, see where Genesis was and where we got them to be with like adapting mm-hmm. similar functionality to page builders, like Beaver Builder or the Astro theme or something like that, then they'll have up their position game, like really, really big. And people will become their raving fans, to be honest, because yeah. Genesis has a lot of hearts behind them. Even my heart is yeah. behind Genesis because I've been <laughs> I've used Genesis for so many years. It's been four or five, maybe more than that. And I've made so many websites on it because it was a normal routine for me. Like Genesis framework installed, put in the sample theme, then start making the custom thing. That's that's how yeah. I made so many of websites. So heart is behind there. Now it depends on WP Engine whether they want to break the heart or get more love <laughs> so okay so besides the page builder genesis uh what about your email marketing do which is your favorite email marketing service i'm sure you send a lot of emails right um i do send a newsletter twice a week using mailchimp uh ever, ever since i started i used mailchimp um i'm not too happy with mailchimp to be honest like they're they're lacking a lot of functionality when it comes to tagging people and when it comes they to just, dynamic. They just announced yesterday they are introducing yeah. tags. Yeah, I'm Finally. really curious how that Finally. will play out. Yeah, because I, I, I was like that close to switching to drip or active campaign or whatever. But um I just never took the time to do it basically. I, <laughs> so I was I, I, I was I going to I was going to switch to Seva, but guess what? They dropped the name. They are back to convert kit. <laughs> so Yeah. <laughs> I'll just switch to ConvertKit. I, I I just thought uh, when I when I read that I just thought it would be a marketing gag or something like that. Like how how can you announce changing the name that big and then go back to it with, without talking to the people? Because first? they didn't do proper research on the word they yeah. used. Yeah, they, they they didn't didn't know the religious meaning behind it. Yeah, it's not about religious. It's also about spiritual and so many things. And okay. this word this word is close to heart of a lot of people who understand the meaning of that. And 
even even if you don't even if you take the heart out and just talk from the practical english point of view like english language point of view seva yeah. means free community service and convertkit is not going to provide this service for free so end of the story no. right <laughs> <laughs> so and actually in germany it's very close to uh, a tissue brand so if they would make people cry they would like have we, we have seva tissues where, where they can okay. wipe off the tears <laughs> <laughs> but they but they did stick to their branding i think they've changed the logo of convertkit yeah. to the seva logo which is the circle thing with a painting drawn which is good i like the branding but but name well i it's not that i hate it but but it just was a pure mismatch with what they were doing and unless they were running a community a charity thing it was awesome it would give red cross run for money yeah but Okay, let's talk about the lighter side of Yan Ko. Almost. Almost. <laughs> <laughs> First, congrats on your upcoming marriage. So, are you excited? Oh yes, I am. I I proposed last year in June. Uh I took my fiance to a trip to Paris. Okay. But like the the holy um city of love at least, at least here in germany it's known like that and then i i took her to uh, a place called montmartre which mm -hmm. is like a hill on top of paris so we went there in the evening it, it was full of tourists and then i i fell down on my knees and she could watch all over paris in that moment and she was like super surprised man so, that would have been amazing blog you should have hired a cameraman <laughs> right <laughs> Luckily she said yes yeah but we we are in a relation for 10 years uh, last month so it's about time to get married <laughs> yeah time to get optimized yeah okay I'll, I'll I'll ask you the same question you know after a few years okay stay there <laughs> <laughs> now now considering that you do a lot of things work wise agency work speed optimization so is handling a team communicating with the team at agency handling your team at speed optimization service like how do you stay focused as a creative person because being focused is out of focus for a lot of people who are in this yeah. sphere i i became a huge believer in routines mm -hmm. like uh, i use coach.me for habit tracking the mm -hmm. the app coach.me mm -hmm. i have um let don't let me lie like nine habits that i'm tracking Mm -hmm. I try to do them daily, but uh, I get like 60% of them daily. They, they range from organizing tasks, like in, my, in Asana, you have an inbox with all the changes that, that are plopping up. I try to get inbox zero in Asana daily mm -hmm. so that I'm on top of everything. Um, I like to get email inbox zero daily for the same reason. I try to write at least 100 words per day. Um, the reason I chose 100 is so that I don't put too much pressure on myself. Like 100 words doesn't get me anywhere, to be honest. It's not enough for an email. It's not, not closely enough for, for a paragraph of a blog post, but you don't stop at 100 words. You, you just aim at 100 words and then you're in the flow and you go for like another 15, 20 minutes and you crank out like 400, 500 words. That that's my at least my rationale behind that. That's and, how I and, work. And you write on the computer or on a paper because if you are writing on a paper, it will take you a long, long time because yeah. all those people who are used to computers, they will fight. They will type so fast on the computer, yeah. and when it comes to paper, man, it's like a snow snail pace. Yeah, I I, I I'm not sure if I've written anything else than my name on paper this year or signature. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I, I try to write, or I write on the computer. Um, what I do then is my blog posts, I usually write them directly in WordPress with, mm -hmm. with the no disturb mode on, like, like flushing out all the sidebars and menus and stuff. And then I just put the window in full screen and I make sure that I have everything that could distract me off. Like I turn Slack off, I, I close the Asana tab. I turn my, I usually have my phone just as I'm looking at it right now. I have my phone laying with the face down no notifications, no vibrations, nothing, so that the phone doesn't disturb me anytime during the work. And uh, I miss a lot of phone calls because of that, <laughs> but I couldn't care less, to be honest, because it's, ju it's just, I can't, you can't write code if the phone rings every 30 minutes or something. You have to be in focus for that. 
Yeah, because and, you, you need to disconnect sometime. Not just when you're yeah. working. When you're working online, you need to disconnect from the offline things. But when you're offline, you need to disconnect from the online things. Yeah. My my habit is like, I don't turn on to 3G or 4G on my phone. And when I'm off from the work, like when I take an afternoon nap or something, I'll just turn off the internet router so that there's nothing that will disturb me. Yeah. You know, phone on the yeah, silent I, mode. I really and, like that, yeah. And it really helps, you know, because when you are trying to sleep and some message pops in, be it WhatsApp or Facebook, it's a human tendency to check what it is. At least yeah. give a glance and you get disturbed a lot. I just turn yeah. off the internet, to, you know. I, I put my phone on airplane mode like around 9 p.m. And then I try to not keep it uh, or to keep it in airplane mode until I finish at least a meditation session and my writing session. Good. So what are your future expectations and targets with regard to your journey in the online world? You already told me about your offline plans. What are your online plans now? <laughs> Just become more known, connect to more people in the WordPress community, like with your group that you added me to. There are so many fantastic people in there that I didn't really have a connection to before. And Which group so do you want to promote it? Uh, the the web creators that like what what what's the name I I don't want to butcher it. Uh, <laughs> is it is it web web, web creators? It, it's three yeah, words. It's web creators community, and community, to access yeah. that group, there's a short URL: webcreatorsgroup.com. Definitely go there if you're listening to this or watching <laughs> this. Definitely join that group. There are so many fantastic people in there. Um, yeah. Yeah, even my heart lies there, you know. I yeah. I love checking updates there. So let's stop yeah. talking about that group and upper promotion. <laughs> let's talk about okay. your future plans. Yeah, yeah, I just I just want to grow my brand. Um obviously I want to grow my businesses so that the agency I work for grows. We we are on a pretty good track this year to uh, sign up some pretty big companies here in Germany as clients. I uh, do print and uh, web design which is pretty exciting. So we work, for example, with a chemical uh, company here that has, I think, 15,000 employees, something like that. And we do, we do internal brochures for them. Mm -hmm. So that, that is pretty big. Um, we are friends with the head of one of the university hospitals in one of the bigger areas in Germany, mm -hmm. in, in the Ruhrgebiet. So that, that's going well. And for my freelancing business, I want to grow the speed optimization service, obviously. I uh, want to add some sort of uh, monthly retainer or monthly income so that it's uh, becoming more stable rather than relying on one-off services. And I really need to fine-tune the processes even more internally so that managing the business takes up less work than it currently does. And what makes you more excited working as a developer for the agency or doing your own thing with the speed optimization, content writing, and a lot of other things on the other side of your online life? It's both super exciting because it's uh, somewhat different. Uh, in, the, in the agency, I'm hands-on in the projects. Like mm -hmm. I write the code myself and, and I do the project planning and management and stuff. And for my own company, for my freelance business, I try to stay on top of things and have other people execute based on what I tell them to. And it's th those balance e each other out quite nicely. So I'm super excited about both. I'm, I'm not sure if I could pick one over the other. And what makes you happy in the online and offline world? <laughs> That's a good question. Um, online... Because Definitely. I'm not going to ask you about the sad thing. There are so many. So let's stick to the happy one. <laughs> I, I, I wouldn't know a single sad thing. I try to focus on, on the positive things. That's, that's really good. I, it, just, it just keeps me sane. Um, yeah, what makes me happy online is getting to know many more people all around the globe. So I live in a, in a city or in a town with 50,000 employees. And I'm probably one of five people who do online interviews like this in, in the city. So I really enjoy being in my, my cozy little home here and talking to people all over the world. Like just we are like we are right now, like thousands of kilometers away. Mm. And just experiencing how other people work in the WordPress community and in online marketing in general it gets me super excited. 
Um, in the offline world, the marriage, obviously. So get, getting married is an event that I'm really looking forward to. Um, we have a pretty nice place here. We have a pretty uh, large ground where we can have a horse right behind our back in our backyard basically the backyard is that yeah big. you mentioned like uh, la- like last time our meeting was scheduled you said 150 bales of hay came to your place yeah. and I-, I was thinking like <laughs> bales of hay <laughs> what he's talking about maybe he lives in a rural <laughs> setting maybe not yeah. let's so yeah. so yeah, do you so have like we- agriculture set up like you have animals farm animals around uh we have one horse and we have a dog Okay. Uh, ne- next year we'll get another dog. Um, we did have two horses until I think October last year, but then one uh, unfortunately got sick and died. So um, we have 1,500 square meters in, in our property. So that, that's pretty big. And we have a place for the horse so it can stay uh, during winter and summer. So we're, we're luckily in the position that we can keep the horse in the winter on our backyard as well, because we have a dedicated building for it. Mm-hmm. Um, don't want to sound too posh. Uh, we just inherited the house. Basically it's the parents home from my fiance, mm-hmm. which we inherited and, um, they put everything in place for us basically. So it's not nothing too crazy. But uh, it's very cozy for us here, and we have very, very nice neighbors. We have a very, very good community here in our street. So just spending time with friends and with neighbors and just basically even taking care of all this because it's a lot of work to maintain. But, but just being able, once you've done the job and you're sitting in the backyard and just being able to enjoy what you've accomplished, that's a really good uh, way to, to, to cool down after a hectic day online. And having a horse is just—is that just a passion, or is it a race horse with serious business implications? It, it, it was. It has been a race horse actually, but uh, my fiance just uses it as a passion for now. So she ha- she's had horses for the past like eleven, twelve, thirteen years, something like that. I really wasn't into animals at all before I met her. <laughs> that but, I now, I, but now you have to be interested in animals. I, I am. I, I actually became <laughs> very interested. Like the first few months we met and mm-hmm. they, they had two dogs until uh, at that time. I didn't want to touch the dogs. I thought they were dirty and they would mess up <laughs> with my clothes and stuff like that. So I was super picky. <laughs> and now, now I couldn't care less if they, if they make my, dog, my clothes dirty or something like that. I really <laughs> love all animals now. Man, that's and I don't. I, I don't need to ask you. Do you do horse riding? Obviously, you do, right? No, no I, huh? don't. <laughs> I, don't? I actually don't. Only my fiance does. I actually <laughs> okay. don't. I, I just uh, take care of the horse when she's not around. Okay, so that's on your to-do list now, right? Ah, uh, I'm somewhat scared <laughs> of that, to be honest. <laughs> yes. You were scared of dogs, also. So you got to take yeah. the next step, right? Yeah, may, maybe in the future I will. <laughs> okay, we'll Jan, thank you so much for sparing time and coming on the show. It was an Thanks, amazing man. chat. Have a good day. Thanks, you too.